in Antarctica, we see the sea ice is actually increasing. Um, we also see that in Antarctica, in West Antarctica, we're getting a decrease in the glacial ice, and in East Antarctica, we're getting an increase. Now, because we've had a sea level rise over the last 14,000 years of 130 metres, West Antarctica now doesn't sit on the land. It, it's pinned onto a few islands with seawater underneath it. So I'm not surprised that it's sloughing off. And that sea level rise of 130 metres over the last 14,000 years is a centimetre a year. Now that is far, far greater than any of the doomsday stories we're hearing. And that's quite a normal rate of sea level change, a centimetre a year. We've had a sea level change um, in the last 14,000 years which just hasn't gone up gradually. It's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up and gone down. And if we look at it from 12,000 years ago to 6,000 years ago, the sea level change was about two centimetres a year. And this is why East An uh, West Antarctica is a little bit unstable and the ice on East Antarctica is actually getting bigger. But there's a few things we don't hear about the ice. The continent of Antarctica is actually rising. The second thing we don't hear is the ice sheets are expanding, but they're also contracting. But the total mass balance is that they're expanding. In Antarctica, what you never hear about are the volcanoes sitting underneath the ice. Remember the volcanoes? One volcano can ruin your whole day. Well, it can ruin your doomsday theory also because we've got some well-known volcanoes sitting underneath the ice. They erupted in Roman times. They are still active. They are still pumping out exceptionally hot gas. These are well known in places like Alaska and Iceland and Canada. We've also got them on Mars. We know about these volcanoes on Mars that have got ice on them. What has just recently been found a couple of months ago was in the Arctic Sea. At a water depth of greater than three kilometres, there was a huge basalt volcano that exploded. And the geologist here would know the only reason you can have a basalt volcano explode is if it's charged with carbon dioxide. And we had this massive high temperature volcano underneath the Arctic Sea. Now, do you think that might have changed the temperature of the Arctic waters? Well, of course it did, but we never hear anything about that. And it's not only temperature that makes ice sheets um, expand and contract. And there's a huge amount of information that shows that it's not only temperature. There are many, many other mechanisms to have ice sheets change. It can be volcanoes, it can be changes in land slope, it can be um, changes in ocean dynamics, it can be um, changes in ice mass, it can be uh, warm times when and you get increased precipitation and uh, ice sheets thicken up. But all we hear is the temperature rise is melting ice. We hear nothing. And there's a lot of scientific literature on these volcanoes sitting under the ice. We hear nothing about that in public. We don't hear anything about the lakes that are sitting beneath the Antarctic ice and the river systems that are sitting beneath the Antarctic ice. These are active. They're not frozen. And they are actually lubricating the movement of ice. But we hear, again, nothing about that. And I'm arguing that the story that we hear in public is a very, very selective story. The same with hurricanes. We're actually finding that hurricanes are actually decreasing. The Gulf Stream, which is meant to carry heat from tropical areas to higher latitude areas, it changes quite considerably. It changes in position. It also changes in strength. It doesn't appear to be related to temperature at all, but that's contrary to what we hear. But the literature is full of information on that. We also see in the literature there's some evidence that the oceans are cooling. And we also see in the literature, and this is really quite bizarre, that there's a link between how ocean currents move and how active the sun is. Again, we, we don't entertain any of these other possibilities. So, if we want to change climate change, we've got just a few little things to do, and they're not the difficult ones. Um, bacteria are great consumers of carbon. The greatest biomass on Earth is beneath your feet. They're not trees, they're not elephants, they're not whales. It's bacteria in the four kilometres beneath your feet. We've got to stop them interfering with the water and carbon cycle. We've got to change the rotation of the Earth to stop the ocean currents changing. Well, that's an easy one. Um, and we've got to stop continents pushing together 
giving us those 15% of volcanoes which the IPCC use, or pulling apart and getting submarine volcanicity. That's an easy one. Atlas had a go at that and just about got it. Um, we've got to stop the Earth wobbling in its orbit. Um, that's an easy one too. Um, a little bit harder, um, trying to stop the change of flux of energy coming out of from the sun. Um, an even harder one is to stop our path of our solar system uh, through the universe. And we're travelling at a, a mightily fast speed. Every 143 million years, we actually come into an area where supernova eruptions are still pumping out cosmic radiation. So the sun blows away stuff, but other times we're in areas where there's a lot of cosmic radiation. So we've got a bit of a problem there, but that's not the real problem. The real problem we've got is actually, once we've stopped all these natural processes, is to persuade our growing economies to stay poor. Now, what are the chances of this? So, it is my scientific view that what we are seeing is the rise of a new urban religious fundamentalist movement that have lost contact with nature. They're also <laughs> unable to accept, like most dogmatic fundamentalist religions, that there might be another view out there which is valid. They're also quite unhappy to accept that there might be a view that is underpinned by evidence and their source of information are seven second grabs. Um, it's, I noticed I didn't use the word knowledge, I used the word information. And they use a word that you hear so often and it's never used in science. And the word that they use is believe. It's a word of politics. It's a word of religion. But it's not a word of science. So I think we're dealing with a, a wonderful movement replacing Western Christianity and Western Socialism that has got some real speed up there and they are changing the world on the basis of science. Whether the science stacks up or not doesn't matter. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the, the inconvenient professor. <laughs>